time and a season for every purpose under the heaven. And there's a time for everything to happen. And there's times, it's like little wounds of time to sow seeds in. And there's times for everything. And you have to be able to recognize what time you're in. And you also have to know how to not stay in the time you're in. For the time you're in is not just set. If you never come out of one time, you'll never enter another time. So it's just not forever. There is a time to be born and there's a time to die. But the scripture says there is ways to lengthen your days on the earth or shorten your days on the earth. So it's not just a set time, it's just that there is a time when that takes place. But there's also a time to mourn, but then there's a time to dance. And so we have to turn our mourning into dancing. But the main thing is, is to be able to recognize the time you're in and how to get out of it. If there is a time for something, then the opposite of it is how to get out of that time. And it's just a, a, a series of steps, a series of them, walking from one time to the next, coming out of bad times, heading into good times. You know, Joseph went to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh had these dreams about times that were coming, two seven-year periods of times. He had this dream about a seven-year period of plenty and a seven-year period of famine so horrible that the plenty would not even be remembered for the famine that was coming. So Joseph came in with a time breaker. He came in with something to break the time. He said, here's what you do, because the Lord also always makes a way of escape. Even if the time is set to happen, there's always a way of escape. You have to recognize the time. So Pharaoh couldn't see any way at all to get out of the time that was coming. It must have depressed his court to no end. All, the, all of his magicians, all of his soothsayers, none of them could even read the time they were in. And then suddenly Joseph tells him what's going on. And I imagine all the wind went out of Pharaoh's sails at that point. And he said, what are we going to do? Egypt will starve. In other words, there's only seven years to look forward to. After that, we've had it. Joseph said, that's not so. There is a way of escape. How is that, Pharaoh asked. Well, he said, you must choose one man that's wise. Set him above all men in this kingdom. And he said, in that man, he said, you'll take that man. And that man will know how to preserve the, the time of the good so that the time of the bad won't, won't be a, affecting the good. He said, set him above all that you have. And he said, and during the time of plenty, take one-fifth of all the harvest and store it up against the time of the bad. And there'll be so much stored up that the bad will not even be recognized. And there's a way of escape. Well, Joseph was the one who wore the coat of many colors. He represented the Savior. They even named him Zephaneth Paneah, which means the Savior. So in this time, when it looks like there's a time of great goodness and a time of terribleness that I'm in, remember, the Savior is the one man set above the time. And he will make a way of escape, and he will show you what to do so that there is no bad time that you can you can store the good so that there is no bad time all he needs is someone who will listen oh yeah all he needs is someone willing to acknowledge pharaoh said can we find another man such as this in whom is the spirit of god he recognized it. All the Lord is waiting to do is for his church to recognize there's only one Savior, one Lord, one King, the Lord of the harvest. He will make a way for you to escape the bad time.
that's why you know there has to be a catching away of the church. He always makes a way to escape the bad time. Hallelujah. So all that it needs is someone who will listen. Say it with me. All that it needs is someone who will listen. setting up a bad time 
And Lord, he got just the right seeds that he could spring up. But Lord, you made a way of escape. You are the Savior. You are Zephaniah Paneah. You are him, Zephaniah Paneah. You are him. You are the one with the coat of many colors. Hallelujah. Yeah, be sure we hear that piano in the stream now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Keep that going. Roxanne, real low. Whatever you hear, just real low. Go while that piano plays.
listening while the sounds are made, listening while the music's played, listening that the sounds of the future must not be forgotten. For you don't just live for the day, because some of you will. You never want to live in the day you're in right at this moment. So there has to be a future sound. We are looking for the sound of the future. The sound of the fresh breath from heaven. Not stale breath. Not legal breath. Not breath that holds you into a place of dire panic. Dire panic. When you find yourself in a corner in a trap when you can't go forward. You can't get out and you know you can't go backward. That's not God. God is not doing such a thing to you. Nor is he doing such a thing to your family. God's way is peace. His way is love. And his way is the way you should desire and seek for. That can only be found in the breath of tomorrow. You're nourished by tomorrow. Take a deep breath from tomorrow.
Hallelujah. So lift up your hands and take a deep breath from tomorrow. Tomorrow, don't hold that sorrow that you're in right now. Tomorrow, don't have that sickness that you're in. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is a clean place. Tomorrow is a place that God walks in. Tomorrow is the place that God walks around in and He speaks to you from your tomorrow. Time comes from tomorrow into today and exits out yesterday. And so time is breath. Spiritual breath comes from God from tomorrow. You live by every word that proceeds out of His mouth. He's talking and you're walking into it as He speaks. So look to tomorrow. Stop looking to today where there's no way out. You're not looking at the way out. You're not looking. You're, you're like Pharaoh when he sat down. He said, oh, woe is me. What are we going to do? Egypt will starve. All the people will die. Everyone will go away. This a whole nation will collapse. But they forgot they had a Savior in it who said, let me show you what to do for tomorrow from tomorrow came the plan build storehouses he said this was all in the imagination this was still in tomorrow and so the answer came from tomorrow and it solved all the problems and Pharaoh realized once he took a breath from the day coming he said can there be any other man that has the spirit of God in him like this man well, the answer was no. So he set him above his house. He set him above his land. He set him above all the people. He said, only in matters concerning the throne will I be greater than you. And so he set him above him as a father to Pharaoh, he became. And that young Pharaoh became a believer in Joseph and his God. And he drew the breath of tomorrow. And he saved the world. Think about it. It's not just today. If you keep focusing on your, your dire situation today, there's no way out. You're just going to live every moment in shortness of breath. Just shortness of breath. When they brought COVID in, that heinous, fear-based Thing that killed people it killed them with fear more than it ever killed them with with infection but when that came in they took away your tomorrow they took it away they locked everybody inside doors and just built a wall around them and said there is no way out you couldn't even be on the streets after a certain time that made no sense at all. Why couldn't you be on the streets after 6 p.m.? I guess that's when the coronavirus came out in full force. It was after 6. It crawled out of the alleys after 6. It crawled out all right. It crawled out if you could have seen Fauci crawling out on his elbows. It crawled out all right. It crawled out of the trash bins. It crawled out of the, the anal bowels of Satan himself. That's where it came from. And Fauci and all of his people came out smelling like it. And now everyone's seeing where it came from. Oh, Brother Robin, it was going so good and then your mouth. Yes. Then my mouth had to speak. And it will continue to do so. Because you have a hope and you have a tomorrow. God never intended on you to be governed by sorrow. If you only live in the sorrow of today and the regrets of days gone by of yesterday, then you have exalted a God above the God of tomorrow. And he said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to give you 
an expected end. Plans to give you a hope and a future. That's his plans. But if you can be locked behind doors and walls, you will never make it there. We look to tomorrow. Lift up your hands and, and drink deeply of tomorrow. The refreshing waters of life that flow from tomorrow. Tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. notes that were to disrupt the status quo disrupt and tear down barriers to get you to tomorrow on the other side of that barrier and on the other side of that sorrow is tomorrow hallelujah so trade in your sorrow for tomorrow there's always a new model coming hallelujah every day every day is a brand new day of God's mercy and His grace. Ready to present it to you. Hallelujah. And your tomorrow.
Hallelujah. Well, sounds of tomorrow, sounds of today pulling tomorrow, and things that wasn't planned and endings that wasn't planned. And it's just sounds that we're listening to so that you can draw, draw fresh breath from your future and not from today. I tell you, the, the, the greatest thing that Satan can do is choke you to death in today. If he can strangle you in today, you'll never have a tomorrow. And he'll use the past as his rope. He'll use failures two hours ago as his rope. He'll use whatever he has to as his rope. But it, it is all to trap you in a time where you think, Dear God, I am, I am here and I can never get out. What you have done is rendered yourself useless. You have told yourself and the whole spirit world, I can't be used anymore. I'm right here. And I can't go anywhere. I'm in this box. And I can't get out. Well, sure, you, you, you're not in a box as you even think you are. You're not even there. You're not really there. It's all an illusion in the mind. It's all an illusion he draws around your thinking to trap your thoughts. Because your thoughts are so creative and so robust and so powerful that if you're allowed to think outside the box, you're liable to do like Joseph and change and save a whole world that no one even dreamed was possible. You know, I remember hearing a story when I was just a boy. And here in Alabama, we used to have all kinds of tunnels. You know, tunnels that trains would go over and you'd drive through them. And, and the ones I saw were just single lane tunnels. And I remember a long time ago hearing a story. And this was a long time ago of a, of a little boy. And they, he was in the car with his parents and this truck went on through this tunnel and he's too tall. And he just stuck that truck in that tunnel. You can uh, calm the effects down while I'm talking if you like. But, and, and turn that off. And so he was, he, he was looking at the tunnel and everything was, he was just jammed in there. And they had engineers out there they had all kinds of people out there trying to figure out how to get that truck out. And it was traffic backed up on both ends. And that little boy just told one of the flagmen, come over there, he said, why don't you let the air out of those tires? And they just looked at him. But the little boy thought outside the box. Why don't you just let the air out of the tires? They let the air out of the tires and the truck dropped just enough to get it out. It was just a thought from someone who wasn't trapped in, in their own problems. He was too young to think about his own self. He was thinking about how to solve that. He heard the answer from the Lord. But if you get, if you get into a place where all you think about is your problems, calm the effects down on this while I'm talking. Just while you're in, you're, you're in the, yes, thank you. You're in, in the confines of your own thoughts. Then you have no outside help because you're trying, you're calling on your own soul for the wisdom to deliver you. And you don't have that kind of wisdom. Only that comes from God and that comes from tomorrow and that comes from looking past where you are into that place. I remember years ago when Robin and I traveled, just traveled around singing uh, just singing um, gospel music at different singings. We were at this, this auditorium, and they finally got to where they didn't like us on the tour going to these places because I preached too much and would give altar calls. And, and so they, they said, we're here to hear a singing, remember? I said, we're not here for that. We're here for singing. And I said, okay. Well, I remember one of the heads of the group, of one of the groups that were there, and they were, they were way more known than Robin and I. They called me to the back, and, and he, when I got through preaching and giving an altar call, 
he looked at me, and we were in a gymnasium, like, and he just kind of drew a box on the floor. And he said, you see that, Brother Robin? I said, yes. He said, I'm in that. And he said, I drew that around me. And he said, he's talking about singing, just singing and ministering through his song. He said, I drew that box around me. He said, you just kicked the box out. of You don't even have a box or something to that effect. And he wanted a place of no box. Well, what you have to do, is it depends on what you, you can't look at your own wisdom to deliver you because you're, you don't have it or you wouldn't have got in it. So you have to look to tomorrow. You're not trapped. You have an illusion of a trap. But what a man perceives is the world he lives in. So if you perceive yourself to be caught and you can't move, then that's where you are. It's like the story years ago I heard about this circus bear. And all of these environmentalists and all was, this bear had been raised in captivity in a cage where he walked 14 paces, turned and walked 14 paces back. And he would just look and walk 14 paces, turn and walk 14 back. That's the size of his cage his whole life. People say, well, that's pitiful, yes. Okay, so they finally advocated for the bear's freedom and won it. So they put him in a cage and took him out into this big open field, this wild, where he could, it was wild to him. And they opened the cage and they were standing around, everybody grins and smiles. And the bear walked 14 paces to the end of that cage and looked out at all the freedom with the door up. And instead of jumping out on the ground, he walked 14 paces back where he was. Now the cage, we're getting a deeper view of this cage. So they figured, they said, how are we going to get him out of here? Well, <laughs> they took this cattle prod. And he got up to the edge of the cage, and they just prodded him on his haunches, just shocked him. He jumped out on the ground, and as soon as he hit the ground, then they just drugged the cage out of his way. Now they're all smiles. He's out in the open. He sniffs around. He looks around. He starts walking. He walks 14 paces and turns around and walks back 14 paces. Now the cage is in his mind, and he can't escape it. See, that's what the, the enemy wants to do, is he wants to treat you like an animal. Because the animal kingdom is below the angelic kingdom. He wants to treat you like an animal. And he gets you in a cage. He's trying to do to you what they did to that bear. The only difference is in a human, a human will do anything to get out of it. If it starts driving them crazy, then they start thinking unthinkable things. You have to begin to look past today into tomorrow and look at that tomorrow you're not trapped there in Finland you think I can't get out of this you're not trapped you just it just it's an illusion of a trap Jesus is your freedom it don't make any difference what country you're in you can be in a starving third world country and nobody on this stage even pretends to know what that feels like because our worst days, even the government housing around here, we call project houses, even the worst of them are like mansions to some people in third world nations. But I'm going to tell you something. Even there, the illusion of, of a cage can't hold down the cry of freedom. If you will just look to tomorrow, dream big, accomplish big, accomplish the dreams you have that God has given you. He said, I know the, the thoughts I have toward you. I think toward you thoughts of a future to give you an expected end. Hallelujah.
So can we remember the lyrics to that again? Well, they were written standing here. The breath of tomorrow. Come on, let's just start playing. You ready? Give me a count. We'll start playing. A. <laughs> say today he'll talk to us from tomorrow hallelujah tomorrow tomorrow 